the St. Unions College uh, Leaving Certificate Parents Information Presentation. Just to give you an idea of um, the schedule for this presentation, I am going to do an overview of the CAO application process for 2021 first. After that, we will have a look at the various supports that are available for students, such as the Here and Dare access routes, uh, the SUSE financial support, the scholarships that might be available, and then we will look at the non-college options, such as apprenticeships, traineeships, and then finally, we'll look at UNICAS, which is the Study in Europe presentation. Ms. Alva Dotti will look at the overview of the UCAS application process. So in terms of what we're doing with our Leaving Certs in class this year, you might be interested to know, um, we are looking at the UCAS application system, which we've already done um, from September up until Halloween. We have now begun the CAO application system in class, explaining to the students what that's all about. Throughout the year, we encourage um, the students to adhere to the important dates and deadlines for various application processes. We encourage them to take part and to engage with the virtual open days that are available, many of them this month. We uh, encourage them also to participate in the various uh, college and university talks. Uh, there are obviously virtual live streamed events this year, uh, a number of them coming up in the next week or two. Um, after Christmas time then, um, or in January, when the application dates for UCAS and CAO have passed, we will begin to look at the non-college options such as PLC courses, apprenticeships, traineeships. We will look at the sports that are available in class, uh, such as here and there, the grants that are available, scholarships. We will, um, throughout the year, talk to students about, obviously, their exams, uh, study skills, goal setting. And finally, towards the end of the year, we look at the transition to third level and the accommodation options that are available. So looking at this year so far, um, obviously, as a result of the public health um, restrictions, many of the usual guidance activities that we would have engaged in with the students have been cancelled, such as open days, regional information seminars and visits to training centres. Um, however, just to let you know, um, we have set up a new Instagram page to inform students about upcoming talks and virtual events and deadlines. We also have our Facebook uh, career guidance and counselling um, Facebook page. Um, my study and I have met individually with 75 out of 134 of the Leading Search students and we'll meet with the remainder of them between now and the Christmas break. Um, there's a number of uh, presentations from third level institutions in the next week or two. We have um, NUI Galway, Maynooth University and IT Sligo, and then in the coming weeks, LYIT and the University of Ulster will also be presenting. We have um, informed and encouraged our students to take um, to engage in the virtual open days coming up. A lot of them are held actually this month. So this month there's LYIT, UCD, DCU, Maynooth University, GMIT. Um, and in many cases, the open day information and presentations are available to view after the event, but we encourage the students to engage with the virtual open days on the, day on the days themselves. If public health guidelines permit, we hope that maybe in the new year or, or later in the year, we might be able to organise some of the visits that we would usually have done, in particular to Donegal ETB training facilities. Um, for students who may be interested in apprenticeships or specific skills training. So just to look at the important dates and deadlines for this year, um, with regard to UCAS, there was an early deadline of October the 15th, but for the vast majority of students, it is January the 15th, 2021. For CAO, the official deadline is February the 1st, but there's a discounted rate of 30 euro if students apply by January the 20th. So that's the date that we'll be focusing on in class to try to get students to apply by that date. In terms of PLC applications, these are accepted um, from March 2021 onwards. And in fact, some students might only apply for PLC courses after they receive their Leave Insert results. And that's OK, too. Uh, here and there applications are in February and March. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as I go through the presentations. The mock exams um, we're looking at the beginning of February here in school. Practical and oral examinations are in March and April. And the leaving certificate exams to be confirmed, but um, around, the 20, this, around the 2nd of June 2021. With regard to grant applications for SUSE, usually this opens in April of the year of application. 
So if we look at the university and college option first, so um, this might the, the information that's contained in this presentation might not be relevant to everybody. Not all the information might be relevant to everybody. So you might be interested in, for a lot of students, they are interested in the university college option. And so the information with regard to applying to CA was very relevant to them. But for other students, they may be interested in doing a PLC course, maybe interested in an apprenticeship. And so this information may be less relevant to them. So that's just some history with regard to the CAO. It's in existence since 1976, and it is the um, body that looks after the offer of places to third level institutions in Ireland. This is what the CAO website looks like, and it's the website um, on which your son will be making his application. You can see the tab at the top, which says, says apply. And then when your son has applied, the tab next to that, my application, is the one where he will track his application as it progresses. This is just a snapshot of the CAO handbook, which all students will be given out in class. And um, the handbook contains all the various institutions that are offering courses for 2021 and the courses that are on offer in each of those institutions. So it's a really important document. Looking at the growth of the CAO system, so um, in 1977, obviously there were only five colleges. Now we have 44 different institutions and it has um, grown in that time. So it now offers over 1300 different courses for students and there's approximately 76, 77,000 applications each year. I've highlighted here just the downloads page of the CAO website because um, on this website and the downloads page, you'll get the actual handbook. You can download a copy of the handbook here, but also which you might be interested in. There's a guide for parents and guardians there as well. This slide highlights the national framework of qualifications. So this is just to set in context um, the whole CAO application process. So in Ireland, we have this, this framework, the national framework of qualifications. It contains levels one to 10, one being the lowest level and 10 being the highest. Levels one and two are primary school education. Level three is a junior certificate qualification and levels four and five equate to the leaving certificate qualification. So hopefully your sons will leave St. Junan's College with a level five qualification in their leaving certificate. And then the various options that are open to them following that are level six, seven and eight. And that's what we're discussing in class, the, the various options at levels six, seven and eight. Following that, if they are interested in continuing their education, they can do a master's degree at level nine and a PhD if they wish at level 10, which is the top level of the NFQ. So to explain that just a little bit further, level six is a higher certificate. So this is the first level up from the leading certificate, which is level five. Level six is a higher certificate. It's usually one or two years duration, usually two years. And level six courses are taken at the various institutes of technology throughout the country. A level seven is an ordinary degree. It's usually three years duration and they are taken at institutes of technology also. And a level eight then is an honors degree program. It is usually three or four years duration. Level eight courses or honors degrees are taken at either universities or colleges of education, but also institutes of technology are offering an increasing number of level eight courses now too. So for example, in uh, 2021, LYIT is offering 10 level six courses, 20 level seven courses and 24 level eight courses. And then if we look at UCD, they are offering 34 level eight courses for undergraduates. So this is just some further information um, following the NFQ about where students can study um, in Ireland. Um, so our institutions, there are 44 different institutions in which students can study, but they are obviously different types of, there are obviously different types of institutions throughout the country. So this just breaks it up. Um, you can see, here that we have universities listed on the left hand side. Um, in red, the universities, uh, the RCSI, NCAD and Shannon College of Hotel Management are also NUI, National University of Ireland uh, colleges. So they're small satellite colleges of the National University of Ireland colleges. 
We have colleges of education then, which are specific um, to a particular discipline. We have uh, 11 different institutes of technology, uh, a number of others that just really don't fall into any particular bracket. And then finally, on the right hand side, we have the 12 private colleges that operate in Ireland as well. So um, it's just important to be aware that um, the first four columns there, they are public colleges and universities, whereas in the fifth column, the private colleges, uh, they obviously they operate privately and they can charge fees of up to six thousand euro per year. So it's important to be aware of that if your son is applying for those. So in terms of making a CAO application, then there are 44 colleges, as I mentioned, within the CAO system universities, colleges of education, institutes of technology. 12 of these are fee paying, as I've said, and um, these colleges will accept students for courses on less points. So this is something to be aware of. A student may be doing some research on careers portal, for example, may see a business course advertised, a level eight honors degree business course advertised at say, for example, Dublin Business School. That course may be only 250, 280 points. So that may seem attractive to your son and they may put it down in their application form. However, it's important to be aware that the fees that they would charge are approximately 6,000 euro per year. In terms of the CEO application, students have two lists on which to apply. They have a level six, level seven combined list, and they have a level eight list. And they have up to 10 choices on each list. So the students can make 20 choices, 10 on each of two lists. The students should apply on both lists to maximize their chances. So say, for example, if they didn't get enough points for their level eight course, they could perhaps get into a level seven course in the same discipline for less points. The two lists operate independently and they have differing minimum requirements. And we'll talk about this in a few minutes. And then on offer stage, applicants can receive an offer from both lists simultaneously. What's most important with the CEO application is that students should list their courses in genuine order of preference because they will be given the course for which they have the highest points on their order of preference. The courses and the levels are clearly labelled in the CAO handbook, which I mentioned earlier. Um, information is also given in courses which allow for further progression within the NFQ. So, for example, if a student decides to do a level seven ordinary degree in the handbook, there is information that lets that student know whether they can progress on to a level eight following from that. Care must be taken with courses marked restricted. So there's a number of courses um, which are labelled restricted. And this means that they must be applied for by February the 1st. They cannot be applied for at a later stage because there are extra assessments associated with those courses. So it might be, for example, the HPAT for medicine. It may be a portfolio in the case of art design or a performance exam in the case of music. Applicants can change their course choices up until July the 1st. They can reorder, add to or delete courses from both of their lists in a facility which is called the change of mind. So the CEO, um, the deadline is January the 20th for the discounted rate. It must be applied for by February the 1st if there are any courses marked restricted that the student is interested in. However, there is an additional deadline of May the 1st. If a student doesn't apply in February, they can still apply by, by May the 1st. However, it's twice the price in order to do that. And then in May, the facility opens, CAO reopens for the change of mind facility from May the 5th until July the 1st. And students can then change their courses. They can reorder their courses. They can add to or delete courses from their list at that stage. So we're now going to look at the requirements for entry to third level education. This is really important because this is to do with whether or not a student receives an offer to get into third level education. And very often students focus on the points requirement for entry to third level ed education. But in actual fact, there are a number of other requirements that are necessary prior to points requirements. So we're going to take these one at a time. The first one is about the minimum entry requirements, and that is nothing to do with points. That is what is necessary in order for somebody to be considered for just entry into college in the first place. And that's about the number of subjects that are taken at leaving cert level, the number of ordinary and, and leave, ordinary and higher level subjects, and um, 
the passes that are required in specific subjects in order for entry. And I will discuss this a little bit further in the next slides. Secondly, um, some students may be asked to satisfy a specific entry requirement, such as a H4 in higher level maths, if they're interested in studying engineering at university level. If they're interested in studying primary school teaching, they must have a H4 in Irish. And anybody who's looking to study nursing must have a laboratory science subject for entry to that particular course. So they're called specific entry requirements. Thirdly, some students may have to satisfy additional requirements, such as the HPAT for medical entry. There may be performance tests for music or drama, and there will be portfolio assessments for subjects such as architecture and art and design. And then finally, students must satisfy the minimum points requirements. So I've listed a few here with regard to 2020 entry. So for students this year, they required 301 points for arts in NUI in Galway, and that was down 17 points from the previous year. However, for primary teaching at DCU, the points requirement in 2020 was 488 points, which was an additional 26 points on the previous year. In terms of agricultural science, I've given that example also 455 points for a level eight degree, and that was up 32 points on the previous year. And for general nursing at LYIT, it required 400 points. And you'll see an asterisk beside that, which means that not all students in this case gained entry to that course on 400 points. So random selection would have been applied for the last number of places for entry to general nursing at LYIT. It went up 12 points this year. Looking at a course like quantity surveying at LYIT, it's offered at both level seven and at level eight at LYIT. The level seven course was 181 points this year, which increased 17 points. And the level eight course was 301 points, which was a decrease of six points on the previous year. So as I said, matriculation is about the minimum requirements for entry to a university or a college. And before an applicant can be considered for admission, they must first meet the minimum standards. And it has nothing at all to do with points. So in terms of um, matriculation at NUIs, the requirement and, and the NUI universities in Ireland are UCD, UCC in Cork, NUI in Galway and Maynooth University. So matriculation requires a student to have six subjects in their leaving certificate. And within these six, they must present English, Irish and four other recognised subjects. They must achieve a minimum grade of a H5 in two of these subjects and a grade O6 or H7 in the other four subjects. A third language then must be included among the other subjects for the vast majority of courses at NUI. They're listed there. And um, however, for science and engineering, that third language is not required. We would have spoken about this in the subject choice evenings pr in, in previous years when we were talking to students about their subject choices. So um, looking at the slide again, for commerce then or business, the subject presented must include mathematics. And for courses in the science, then there must be mathematics and a science subject included in the six subjects that are presented. So that's for matriculating or for meeting the minimum entry requirements at the NUI universities. Now, with regard to the other colleges then, for entry to Trinity College, again, students must present six subjects. However, the difference um, here is that there's no third language requirement as Irish can be used as the other language in addition to English. For DCU and UL, our other universities, there is no third language requirement, except courses which may include a language component, such as studying business with a language, and they may have a specific grade requirement in that particular subject then. Looking at entry to the Institutes of Technology, at level six and level seven, students must present at least five leaving certificate subjects to include a pass in either English or Irish plus maths. And then for entry to Institutes of Technology at level eight, students must present six leaving certificate subjects to include a pass in either Irish or English plus maths. And then in addition, two of the six subjects must be at higher level grade H5 or above. And that's just a slide looking at the third language requirement for a number of different courses throughout the country. 
So a little bit about the point system then within the CAO. So generally speaking, the CAO system, the num within the CAO system, the number of qualified applicants is greater than the number of course places available. And so therefore a selection process is required. And that selection process is called the CAO points system. So in terms of calculating the points, they are calculated from one sitting of the leading certificate only. And the points total is calculated from the students' six best subjects in the leading certificate. So most students are doing seven subjects for leading certificate, and they count their six best when they're calculating their, their CAO score. Entry requirements, like such as having a pass in, in maths or in English, or having a pass in a third language for entry to NUI, for example, can be satisfied over more than one setting of the leading certificate, with some exceptions, which is the main exception there is, is medicine. But with regard to also entry requirements, so if a student requires French or German, a third language, in order to enter into or to matriculate for NUI, that subject can be calculated or can be used for an entry requirement, but it doesn't have to be calculated in the sixth best. So it needs to be used for the purposes of entry, but it does not have to be counted if it is a student's weakest subject. It doesn't have to be counted in the six best. The other six can be calculated instead. And this slide details the point structure. It's a new point structure actually from 2017 onwards. So it gives the, the percentages and the points allocated for both higher level and ordinary level grades. Mm -hmm. And um, just a note there with regard to the bonus points for higher level mm -hmm. maths. So they are awarded to any student who receives a grade H6 or above in higher level maths, 20, 25 bonus points. At the bottom, we've also detailed for students who are sitting LCVP. Um, it has a different scoring mechanism. So rather than uh, H1 to H8 or 0, 01 to 0, 08, it in actual fact is a pass, a merit or a distinction and the points that are awarded for each of those are, are detailed on this slide as well. LCVP can be used as one of the six best subjects in the same way as the others. So in terms of the CAO application, it's essential for students to list courses in genuine order of preference. And in this way, then a student will be offered the highest preference course for which they have enough points. A student can move up the list from one CAO round to the next. However, a student can never move down the list. And the example is, you know, if you get your first preference, you will never be offered anything lower down your list, regardless of the points. So if a student applied, say, for example, to NUI in Galway and they got the points and they were offered Galway, but perhaps they had LYIT down as a second choice and they had changed their mind and decided they didn't want to move away from home, they would not be able to opt for the LYIT course in that case, they would have to either just accept NUIG or reject that offer. That's where the level six, level seven list is very important because in that case, a student could, in actual fact, have Galway as number one on their level eight list, but they could have LYIT as a number one on their level seven list. And in actual fact, they may get an offer from both if they do well enough in their leaving cert. And so then they could decide in August when they have gotten their offers which they would prefer to take. So they can move up the list from one round to the next. So within CAO, there are a number of rounds or maybe seven or eight rounds. In fact, uh, round one is the main round, the main round where most students are offered a place. So they can move up the list from one round to the next, but they can never move down the list. And in certain cases, random selection may apply in a situation where a number of applicants share the same points as those needed for the last available place on the course. And the example that I gave earlier of general nursing and LYIT is an example of random selection. So this is what it will look like when your son is making his CAO application online. Um, so he enters in the course codes. So it's a five digit code. Um, there's an abbreviation of the college first in the first two letters, followed by a numerical code then, which refers to the course in, in question. And you can see here that this is a level eight list, and you can see the 10 choices, and the student has 
put in just two choices, we would recommend that students would put at least five or six choices on both lists if that's possible. In terms of the CAO offers then, in August, um, the CAO, and it's there, obviously all the dates have to be confirmed yet, but it's usually around the 12th of August, the CAO will make offers to students from both lists. So the offers will be made online um, and a student may receive either two offers, one offer, or no offer. So a student might receive an offer from their level six, level seven list and also their level eight list. It's up to them then which one they want to choose. A student may just receive an offer from their level seven list if they didn't apply for any level eight courses or vice versa. Or they may receive no offers if they weren't deemed eligible for any of the offers. Students can only accept one offer at a time. So the minute they accept one offer, the other one automatically falls away. And students then are still eligible for all higher preference offers in later rounds. So in a second, when the CEO releases their round two, if a student um, is eligible for a place in a, a higher place, then that place will be offered to them. Students accept their offer online. They have five days to think about their offer um, and they accept their offer online. If a student then is interested in deferring a college place, and that's where they put their offer off, put their course off for a year, they must contact the higher education institution directly in writing in order to do that. So that is not granted by CAO, but instead that is granted by the specific higher education institution. And there are there is information in the CAO handbook with regard to deferral, which students can look up if they wish. There are very specific grounds in some cases for being awarded a deferral, so students would need to look into that. And as I mentioned earlier, from May the 5th until July the 1st, students can adjust their course choice lists using the free change of mind facility. So at that stage, when it comes to May, um, you know, students have done their mock exams, they may have dropped levels, they may want to, in certain subjects, they may want to revise their choices and they can do that then from May the 5th to July the 1st free of charge, as many times as they want. Again, um, here's a list of uh, CAO key dates and deadlines. So it's just outlining um, some of the information that I have mentioned already. The official closing date for CAO applications is February the 1st, 2021 at 5.15pm. If you apply um, at that stage, it's €45. Euro. However, there is an early discounted rate of €30 euro if students get their application in by January the 20th at 5.15pm. So that's the date that we focus on in class is January the 20th. CEO application is very straightforward. A student could um, have their application done in about 10 to 15 minutes. They'll need a debit card in order to make that um, application to pay the application fee and they will then be given a CAO number which they will use for their application from then onwards. And then I've mentioned here a few of the deadlines with regard to here and there. I'm going to discuss that in the next section of the presentation. The change of mind facility from May the 5th until July the 1st and the expected date for leaving certificate results is approximately August the 10th, 2021. So I hope that I have explained fully the CAO application form. The slides are there for you to go back over. The information with regard to matriculation and entry requirements is detailed information. It's complex in some cases information, but um, you can have a look again at the slides, hopefully. And if there are any questions, you can contact us with regard to that. If you wish to see a demo application form, they, th there is a demo application form available on the CAO website uh, where the resources are all available there. So um, maybe you could look at that prior to doing the actual application form. So with regard to supports then that are available for students at third level, there's some financial supports such as grants and um, scholarships can also be financial, but sometimes they're also to do with access to third level. And then we have the DARE and HEAR schemes, which are about access to college for students who have physical or educational disability or are from socioeconomic disadvantaged backgrounds. And we'll deal with each of these in turn. So with regard to uh, financial or grant information for the academic year 2020-2021, um, 
the college registration fee is currently three thousand euro per year of course um, these fees are subject to change in any upcoming budgets between now and entry of 2021. Um, however, the fee remains the same irregardless of college or location, except in the case that I mentioned earlier with regard to private colleges, which do charge up to €6,000 per year. So students can apply for financial assistance online from SUSE, which is the Student Universal Support Ireland, for the academic year in which they're starting college. They can apply for financial assistance prior to receiving a college or university place. And that's what most people do. So they apply in advance. And for last year, the system opened on April the 5th for applications. So students can do this early in the year and they can know in advance whether they have been approved for financial assistance or not prior to going to third level. So uh, some of the eligibility criteria with regard to the uh, SUSE grant um, a student must be an Irish, an EU, an EEA or a Swiss national. They must be ordinarily resident in Ireland or the EU for three out of the last five years. They must be progressing in their education. That means increasing in the NFQ level. So say, for example, going from level five, which is a reading certificate, into either a level six, seven or eight. And they must be attending an approved course in an approved institution. Parental or guardian income table um, won't be available until approximately March or April of 2021. So this is released each year detailing what the income threshold is. And in terms of last year for 2020, the threshold for a family of one to four children was €39,875. However, even though students can't, the, the income table is not available and students can't apply until April, around the beginning of April in 2021, Students can begin organizing the relevant documentation that is needed for a SUSE application. So the application is substantial and it will require documents such as a long form birth certificate, P60s, P21s, a copy of year ended accounts, social welfare statement of total amount received, etc. So some of that information a student can begin gathering together and, and having in a safe place. You can get more information on this at studentfinance.ie or SUSE.ie. And this information will be updated as the year progresses. And usually the closing date for receipt of student grant applications is at the beginning of July. So this is what the SUSE website looks like. There's huge information here that you can have a look at. And this is the Eligibility Reckoner, which is a useful facility on the SUSE webpage. Um, it's a, a little questionnaire of about 10 or 12 questions which you and your son can sit down and do together. It is not an answer. It's not a definitive answer with regard to whether um, you might be eligible for the SUSE grant that you obviously have to complete the full SUSE application form. But this is a little reckoner which um, allows you to give some basic information and at the end of which uh, SUSE will say progress to application or they may say, um, your income is above the threshold. So it can be um, a useful little tool for you to do prior to the SUSE application itself. And this is available for you to do at any stage. Uh, this was the reckonable income table for 2020. So um, it's categorized in terms of less than four dependent children, then if you have between four and seven dependent children. Um, so it tells you if a student is um, to get 100% funding from the government, which is 100% student contribution and 100% rate of maintenance, then the income must be under the amounts that are mentioned here. So there are two parts to the SUSE grant. The first one is the student contribution that is mentioned there, and that is the 3,000 euro that is paid to the college or university. And if a student is deemed eligible for SUSE, that 3,000 euro will be paid directly to the institution. And the second part of the SUSE grant is to do with maintenance. And that is money that is awarded for a student for living, either living at home or living away from home. So there are two different categories there. So if they are living less than 45 kilometers from the institution, then they are awarded 1,215 euro. That is paid directly into the student's bank account over the course of the year, so in monthly installments. And if they live 
45 kilometers or more away from the institution than a student may be awarded 3,025 euro again paid into their bank account in monthly installments over the course of the academic year. Susie can award 100% grant to a student uh, where they cover both, that is the student contribution and the maintenance, or they may decide to award 75%, 50% or 25%. So it's not necessarily a case of all or nothing. The application to Susie is free, so anybody can apply. I'm going to move on now to the supports that are available to students with regard to access to college. So this is about gaining entry to college um, for students who have either a physical or learning difficulty or for students from a socioeconomic disadvantaged background. And the website is accesscollege.ie for both. So you can see that um, on the left hand side it's for the higher education access route and on the right hand side for the disability access route to education. And this website is a, an excellent website giving huge amounts of information on both systems of access. So just a little bit of, of background and we would have DARE and HEAR applicants in St. Eunan's College every year. Um, so there's a little box on the CAO application form which a student would tick if they're interested in applying to DARE or to HEAR. And the idea of this is that students who have difficulties, who may have difficulties applying to third level or gaining entry to third level, that they would be given additional supports. And those supports come in the form of uh, extra supports at third level, when they get there and if they get there, um, but also these students would be entitled to reduced points for entry to third level. And that's one of the most attractive things about the, the, the DARE and HEAR schemes for students who are trying to enter third level. So they check the disability box on their CAO application form. Uh, that's simply stating that they wish to apply for, for um, in the case of disability DARE or the box with regard to here. Um, what happens then is that they will be directed to a supplementary information or a SIF form where they're asked to outline the nature of their disability and provide documentary evidence. And this is to help colleges to prepare for students and it will in no way mitigate against an applicant receiving a place. So say for example, if a student applies for a DARE place and they are not deemed eligible for whatever reason, they are still within the normal CAO system and it doesn't um, have any bearing on their application as a standard CAO applicant. So um, they just fill out information and that information is also to support the student when they go to third level then, because uh, here in St. Junan's College, we have been supporting students maybe since first year with resource classes or learning support classes and by ticking that box, it simply informs a third level college that the student has a disability and hopefully then support will be put in place for that student as well when they go to third level because they may need supports when they go there as well. They can decide they don't want the supports, but hopefully they'll be offered those supports at third level. So with regard to DARE then, there are 25 institutions um, which operate um, the DARE system, the Disability Access Route to Education, and um, those, this happens where those disclosing a disability may avail of a reduced points entry scheme. There's, there, are, there is obviously criteria with regard to this, so um, there has to be official verification of the disability. There are age limits on certain reports or, or psychological reports and the various documentation that's required. And all this information is contained in the CAO handbook. So for a, per, for a student to apply to DARE, um, they must apply by February the 1st. They have to fill out the supplementary information form, the SIF form, and um, additional documentation by March the 1st. And then they must send their official documentation to the CEO office in Galway by March the 15th. With regard to HERE, there are 24 institutions that operate the HERE scheme. And this is for students 
who experience socioeconomic disadvantage. So students who, um, without some form of support, may not go on to third level education. So it may be for students who are um, from low income backgrounds, or maybe a single parent family, uh, students who may be the first person in their family to go on to third level education. So that's what the HERE scheme is for, to support those students to get them to third level education and to um, qualify them in a, in a third level qualification. So again, students apply online for this. They must apply to CAO by February the 1st. Um, in this case, that's what I mean about the May the 1st deadline. If a student waits until that date, then they cannot be considered for either dear, dare or here in that case. So the deadline is February the 1st for CAO and then various financial documentation must be supplied by this to the CAO office by March the 15th in 2021. So there's a number of additional deadlines there for candidates for DARE and HERE. So if we just look at the DARE Disability Access Route to Education um, in a little bit more detail then. Um, so it is intended to support students with diagnosed disabilities such as Asperger syndrome, autism, ADD, ADHD, uh, blind or vision impaired students, students with dyspraxia, mental health conditions, neurological conditions, significant ongoing illness, physical disability, specific learning difficulty such as dyslexia and others. So there's 25 different colleges that are part of the scheme and they're listed there. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the, the application deadline for CAO was February the 1st. The supplementary information must be um, must be completed by March the 1st and then the documentation must be sent off by March the 15th. With regard to the diagnosed disabilities, so obviously documentation will need to be sent to CAO. Um, that documentation may be, say for example, a psychological report that has been carried out and with regard to specific learning difficulty or maybe dyspraxia here in school, or it may be a medical report um, that needs to be completed by a consultant that the stu student is seeing. Um, there's a number of different criteria and that's where the Access College website will give you the specific documentation that's required in the case of any of the diagnosed disabilities. And you'll get the full list of diagnosed disabilities as well on the Access College website. The criteria is very strict. Um, you know, specifically in case in the case of specific learning difficulty or dyslexia, there are test scores which a student um, must meet in order to be considered for DARE. If a student doesn't meet that criteria, it means that they can still tick the disability box, which means that they will still be offered supports at third level and their CAO application is considered as per everybody else's CAO application. With regard to DARE and with HERE as well, it means that in actual fact, students' application is looked at on an individual basis and all of this additional information is considered with regard to their application. And this is the DARE section of the Access College website. And you can see on the right hand side, the list of diagnosed disabilities. And when, if you wish to get further information on each of those, you can click into them and it will give the information on the documents that are required with regard to those. Moving on then to the HERE Access Scheme, which is the Higher Education Access Route. Uh, again, there are 24 institutions which are involved in this, which means these are the institutions which will allow students or have set aside places for applicants deemed eligible for HERE in order for their particular courses and um, the list of institutions that are involved in the HERE Access Scheme are listed here in the slide. And here, this, the HERE Scheme targets students who are very motivated and have the ability to attend third level but may lack some of the social or economic supports. So um, therefore the students who usually would apply to the HERE Scheme are um, students of um, families who may be in long-term unemployment or maybe low family income, uh, students with a, a low family tradition of progression to third level or who may be from socioeconomic groups that are traditionally underrepresented at third level education. Um, now with regard to the HERE scheme, um, 
the supports can include can include reduced points, some financial support, social supports, personal guidance, an orientation program, and extra tuition. But it's important to say that um, students must get approximately ninety percent percent of the points needed to do your course of choice in the first instance, and that in actual fact, a lot of students who are on the HERE scheme achieve their place with no concession in points at all. And this is the HERE page on the Access College website. Again, um, it explains with regard to HERE, there's a number of indicators that need to be satisfied for a student to be eligible for HERE, and they're all explained on the website. And uh, you can get more detail on the income, medical card, social welfare payment, all of the various options here when you click into it. Here's just um, a reminder with regard to the timeline for both here and there. So the CAO system opened on the 5th of November, so effectively students can um, make an application anytime from then. They must apply by the 1st of February, <clears throat> by the 1st of March. They must complete all of the additional information, the CIF form, the supplementary information form. And by the 15th of March, the um, supporting documents must be in Galway in the CAO office. So there's a number of various scholarships that are available for students um, throughout the country and in various disciplines. And you can have a look at them here. I've mentioned a number of them. Um, there, there is also a comprehensive list of the scholarships. This is just an idea of some of the ones that are available, but there's a comprehensive list on the uh, links that I have included here um, on Careers Portal. And you'll also find uh, links to the various scholarships available on the student finance web page as well. Just to mention LYIT in particular, they have a number of scholarships for new entrants. Um, their REACH scholarship is awards about 800 euros a year um, and it's based on income. Um, in particular there I want to mention as well the Optum Healthcare Scholarship. So uh, St. Eunan's College has a student currently who um, has just been awarded the Optum Healthcare Scholarship. Um, he is studying in NUI in Galway and he has been awarded two and a half thousand euros per year of his course for his studies in Galway as a result of the Optum Scholarship. There's a lot of information on the website there in LIIT and you can look up that information if you're interested in any of those scholarships. This is just a slide. Um, these were last year's prices with regard to approximate costs for um, accommodation costs at third level. So it's just one of the things to consider. And we would say it to the students in class um, with regard to you know making their choice, taking into consideration the various costs that are involved in third level, in particular moving to one of the major cities. As some additional information and um, you'll get information on accommodation by going into the college website and by clicking on the accommodation link. Some in, involve um, an application process you know, where um, students must apply in advance. So it's important to be aware of that information. And if a student does have a particular college in mind that they're applying to, they should look up the accommodation options as early as possible. So that's the end of the CAO presentation and um, I'm going to now look at the various other options that are available to students if they do not wish to go down the college route, the traditional college route. So we have in Derry Northwest Regional College, um, our students have, a number of our students have always gone to Northwest Regional College following the leaving cert. Um, as a stepping stone to university or as a stepping stone then into direct employment afterwards. Northwest Regional College offers students a number of different qualifications at level two, level three, level four, and at its higher end then it offers the HMC or the HND, that's a higher national certificate or diploma, and in more recent years it now offers foundation degrees also. So it's important to say that at Northwest Regional College in Derry, um, a student cannot gain a degree 
but they can gain at the highest qualification a foundation degree which would allow entry into a degree program and there's a number of um different um employer focused programs uh, there's apprenticeships there's traineeships higher, higher level apprenticeships i've included some information on the slides for you to have a look at these are all of the foundation degrees that are available in northwest regional college and the foundation degrees are two years duration and are validated by the university of ulster and they can be used then as an entry point to employment or as a stepping stone to university for example, then students would do their foundation degree and then apply through UCAS or CAO for the degree of their choice. With regard to Northwest Regional College, the system, it's an online application system and um, very often students are called for an interview if they are selected for the particular course. Some of the courses will require an addition or maybe a portfolio with regard to art and there are varying entry requirements. So within the UK system, there is a system of UCAS tariff points it's like an equivalent to the CEO points. Um, these UCAS tariff points are required for the foundation degree programs in particular, and they range from 32 UCAS tariff points right up to 96 UCAS tariff points. So for a lot of courses in Northwest Regional College, there are no fees, but for the foundation degrees, there is a fee of £2,500 per year of the course. And uh, students in particular, um, we have students currently who are doing for example, a level three in health science in Northwest Regional College and who have in the past progressed on into the likes of, of nursing at McGee University as a result of doing a course like that, a one or a two year course. Then they apply to UCAS on the basis of the results of that particular course as opposed to just their leaving certificate results. And some students have gone on to do their full nursing degree with the University of Ulster then. With regard to apprenticeships, so apprenticeships have become very popular again in Ireland. We now have uh, two different types of apprenticeships, really. We have the traditional craft um, and trade apprenticeships that most of you will be familiar with um, in construction, electrical and engineering. Um, but we now, since 2016, have a number of new apprenticeships available in computing and med tech and insurance, accountancy and finance, logistics and hospitality. So there's a, a whole new array of apprenticeship courses that are available for our students now if they wish to take this option. So the apprenticeship is a, a method by which a person works for an employer in a chosen occupation and learns the necessary skills, knowledge and attitudes to become a qualified craftsperson and the slogan that is associated with apprenticeships is earn while you learn. The regulatory body associated with apprenticeships is SOLACE and you'll get lots of information on their website. Um, what happens in an apprenticeship is that a student follows a specific course of training and undergoes a series of assessments. Their training is approximately four years uh, and there are seven different phases of, of training. Four of these are with a registered employer and three then are in either training centres or in institutes of technology. The main um, prerequisite of an apprenticeship programme is that a student must obtain sponsorship from a registered employer. So they must have an employer within the area that they're interested in who agrees to take them on for the training phases. So that may be, you know, a car garage in the case of, of a mechanics uh, apprenticeship or um, an electrical um, an electrical contractor who would take them on in the case of becoming an electrician. There are minimum entry requirements associated with apprenticeships. So the entry requirements are minimum age 16 and to have pa five passes in a junior certificate. However, um, you know, in reality, um, employers are uh, are expecting much more from students. You know, they would prefer students to be older, to have done their leaving cert, um, to have some work experience in the area that they're applying for an apprenticeship in. So all that is important. But if students are interested in apprenticeships, we will be talking about that in the in the latter half of the year. And um, as I said earlier, hopefully we can still get a visit again to the training centre which is here in Ballyrain and Letterkenny and it lets students see what's involved in uh, doing an apprenticeship and in, in studying at that level.
the qualification that uh, an apprentice gets on completion is a QQI level six or the NFQ level six on the framework. Um, and I've mentioned already that they follow they fall under uh, seven different sectors now. So there's a lot of variety of courses out there. This can be an, a, a very attractive option for students who would prefer to work to get stuck in to, you know, um, learn something manually or practically following the leaving certificate and even in some of the new courses like say for example the insurance apprenticeship this allows students to work four days a week and then on the fifth day a week they engage in online lectures with for example Sligo IT and that's how they gain their apprenticeship over the course of the four years so it's very much about learning on the job um, and getting their training that way. And that might suit some students better than others. Other options, Chagask offer a number of qualifications in agriculture, horticulture, equine and forestry. If students are interested in any of those options following the Leaving Cert. So most of these are at levels five and six because they're specific um, there's specific courses in, in uh, quite specific areas. So you can see there the ones that um, the Chagask are offering. A PLC course is a very good option for students following the Leaving Cert and it's becoming an, an increasingly attractive option as well, especially where students perhaps haven't gained entry to the course of their choice or if students are undecided about what area they would like to go into or what course they would like to do. A PLC offers them a year where they can think some more and do some more research while still gaining additional qualifications such as a PLC course. So it's usually one year duration. It's very good preparation for direct employment if a student is interested in that. Um, it is a specific to a particular discipline and gives vocational, personal and general skills. It includes a work placement one day a week and it also provides access to third level afterwards. So a student who completes a PLC course can, uh, for example, then apply to CAO the following year on the basis of the results of their PLC course rather than their leaving certificate results or in addition to their leaving certificate results if they wish to do that so, as well. Um, an application form uh, requires details of leaving certificate results, work experience and references. So it's a direct application form to the PLC colleges. Um, we have PLC colleges in Errigo College here in Letterkenny, also in Finn Valley and in St. Catharines and Kelly Beggs. And students could apply to do a PLC course in any of those, depending on uh, where they're living and what's most convenient to them. The PLC fee is currently 350 euros. So it's, um, it's a, a good investment um, for a year. It's um, rather than, you know, maybe paying out uh, the student contribution charge at a college or university and a student deciding then that the course is not for them, it's a very good option to do something like this instead. Very often students only apply after the leaving certificate, maybe if they've been disappointed with the results. Um, but it is PLC courses fill up on a first come first serve basis. So we encourage our students to apply for PLC courses in the course of the academic year prior to doing their leaving certificate so that they will have a place on that particular course if that's what they want to do. So um, during the leaving certificate year, students can apply to CAO, they can apply to UCAS, they can apply and for a PLC course, they can apply to Northwest Regional College, all um, at the one time, they don't just get one application. And what happens is that then following the results, they make a decision on which course they want to accept. So I've mentioned already an Errigal College in Letterkenny offers a number of level five courses and also a level six course. And uh, there's a number of PLC courses, say, for example, at Sligo College of Further Education. Um, so if a student maybe has a particular interest, they offer 30 level five, level six courses. So um, there's more variety um, at, just to give you an example there of Sligo College of Further Education where students can engage in the PLC. So then just looking at a few last things, um, choosing the right course is really important. It's much more important than choosing the location um, or choosing the college or university. So what we say to our students is for them to research and research and research all the time. They can look up courses online. 
Careers Portal is an excellent website. So also is Qualifax. It will give um, huge amounts of information. It also contains videos and YouTube clips about the type of work, the type of course that's involved. Um, but on uh, online students, we ask students to check the minimum entry requirements, check if there are specific or additional entry requirements that we mentioned earlier, check previous points requirements and if they've increased or decreased. All this information is available uh, on the Careers Portal website very clearly for students. Check the duration of the course, check the modules of study within that course. So we would encourage students to look very closely. And if, for example, they are choosing a course in engineering, look to see what level of maths is, is involved in that particular course. Is physics um, something that they would be studying in that particular course? If it is, you know, is it in first year or is it, you know, in two or three years of the particular course? So look at the modules of study within the course. We look at we ask them to check if there's a professional accreditation awarded to the course so for example teaching council recognition or um uh, recognition on the register of physiotherapists or whatever the case may be that's called accreditation it's really important when choosing a course we ask students as well to check if there's a work placement element and if so what's the duration of it is it paid or unpaid is it at home or abroad is it something that you organize yourself or something that the college would organize for you this would be basic um, research that we would say to students they should be doing about any course that they would put on their cao form we would say to students to compare and contrast similar courses from different institutions under the above headings and it should always be about the course and not about the location so you know, students may wish to go away to go to college, but in actual fact, LYIT might be offering um, the, a very, very similar type of course to one that's, that's offered in Dublin. Um, we ask them to look at video clips, student testimonials that are contained in prospectuses or on career websites, because these give a very good insight into the various courses. Talk to myself or my study about their possible choices and the order of preference. Um, so students, tend not to be so worried about the order of preference, maybe around the February deadline. But when it comes to the end of the year, they begin thinking about that a little bit more because they have more information to go on. They have done their mocks. They have an idea of what points they, they, they are likely to get as a result of having done their mocks. So the order of preference becomes much more significant then at that stage, and they need to look at it in much more detail. So just a note with regard to that, um, with their CAO application initially by the by the 1st of February or hopefully the 20th of January for the discounted rate, um, students do not have to enter choices. We always tell them that it's a very good idea to enter some of the courses that they are interested in because that information is then um, passed on to the colleges and universities. So they get an idea of how many people are interested in, in particular courses. And they may decide to increase places on, on those courses as a result of the interest that is expressed by February the 1st. So we say to students to, even if they don't worry about the order of preference at that stage, that they still put onto their application courses that they are interested in. When the change of mind opens on the 5th of May, they have two months then when they can order, reorder their preferences or delete or add new courses then as they so wish. So they're not actually tied to anything that they put on their application form by the 1st of February. We encourage students to attend open days of obviously nothing can substitute for actually seeing where a student will be studying, the facilities, the staff, the students, etc. Obviously this year um, and probably even into next year, they won't be able to do that. That's why the virtual open days are really important if they can engage in those as much as possible. There will be um, online, there will be small, short talks on various courses. There will be an opportunity to view accommodation options within the college. There'll be an opportunity to view the facilities that are there. So um, the colleges are doing as much as they can to try to um, give students an insight into what it's like to study there. And we encourage the, the boys to have a look at those. In particular, this, this month, there's a number of them coming up this month. We also say to students that if they know anyone who has done the course or attended the institution or is currently working in the profession, to talk to them and to get first-hand information on the particular career that they may be interested in. 
And just with regard to goal setting, um, as I said earlier, we will meet with all students individually between now and Christmas regarding their career course options. So we have seen an awful lot of students and we'll, we'll meet the remainder of them between now and the Christmas break. Earlier this year, all sixth year students participated in a motivational and study skills workshop given by Ray Langan of Raise the Game. And he gave an excellent workshop to all the students. Supervised study is available in the school just for sixth years this year because of um, public health guidelines, but it's available um, from Monday to Friday. And I've given some of the details there. There's a number of sixth years who are currently engaging in that and find it very productive. Um, we ask you to encourage your son to study. It's important that students do not leave revision to the last minute. Mm -hmm. You know, the Leaving Cert programme is a two year programme. Um, it was interrupted last year because of the school closure. And so there are students who have a lot of work to catch up on. And um, we encourage them to do that as much as they can and to revise as much as they can um, during the course of the year. If you can encourage them to set goals for himself and check in to see if these are being achieved. So they've recently um, gotten their Halloween report. So just to have a look at that and see you know, um, where those results are in relation to maybe the goals, uh, or what the predicted grade the student might have or be hoping to achieve in the lead insert, and what's the difference between what they have actually got and what they're hoping to get and to set some goals around that. We encourage, if possible, to create a positive study environment at home, um, a desk, a chair, quiet space with no phone and distractions, um, if possible. Ray Langan told the students earlier this year that their greatest distraction this year is their mobile phone. Their greatest distraction to doing well in the lead insert is their mobile phone. So that's, that's an important consideration. And it is a difficult and a stressful year for most students. So we're all doing our best to, to support them at this time. These are some useful websites for students and for parents as well. And just to give you a look at some of them, this is the Careers Portal website. It's excellent. Um, it has a huge amount of information on it with regard to courses, but also about, as I've mentioned earlier, about scholarships, about um, apprenticeships. All that information is all contained in this one website. The Qualifax website is another, career, another Irish career website, which is excellent. This is the fetch courses so the further education and training course hub so if if there's an uh, interest in plc courses and apprenticeships and traineeships all the information will be contained here this is the uh, apprenticeship website as well called generation apprenticeship you may be interested in this the lyit website this is just a few examples minute university website and so comes the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. I know it probably hasn't been the same as if we can give as if we could give the presentation face to face. But um, we hope that you have found this um, useful. If there are any questions or concerns regarding this, because we would always have had you know a number of questions at the end of the presentation. But if you do have any questions, you can contact myself at whydoherty at stunions.com or mustudy at aduddy at stjunins.com and we will get back to you as soon as we can with regard to your query. We would also um, ask maybe if you would like our Career Guidance and Counselling Facebook page for events and updates and deadlines and you can sort of be in sync with um, your son with regard to you know what we're doing in class and also we have a new Instagram page um, at St. Junins College Career Guidance which also has uh, great up-to-date information on it. And to just give you um, a look at our Facebook page and our Instagram page. And again, to reiterate that the phone number here at the school is 912-1143. You could give us a call or email us with any questions that you might have. Thank you very much.